Hey. Buenos dias, buenos dias. Thank you for having me. You know my name, I don't know your name, so we're going to go quick and you're going to give me your name because I don't like speaking to people and not knowing their name. No, it has to be louder. It has to be louder because when you speak soft, it means you're scared or shy. So you're neither. You're powerful young people, so I need to hear it loud and proud. Thank you. Um, I am so honored to be here. Um, as it was said, I started my career as a public school teacher. So you're, not, you're always a teacher, right? I'm a mama, I'm a grandma. So um, the process of learning never stops. It never stops. Because you are always finding new things and discovering new things. So the classroom is a teaching place, it's a learning space, but your home is a learning space. Your community is a learning space. So we were invited um, to uh, do a project, and the project is in celebration of Latino Month. Uh, I always feel very sort of peculiar about celebrating uh, the history of our colonization, right? So we speak Spanish in Puerto Rico because we were colonized by the Spanish. St. Croix was colonized by the English and a, and a number of other uh, colonizers. So you speak many different languages and a combination of languages. But that's the reality, we were colonized. But the one thing that we have been looking at, researching, studying, is what unites us, right? You could be my daughter, you could be my daughter, you could be my son, because you look exactly like my sons. I don't have daughters, but I have granddaughters. So that the reality is that we're connected, and there's a history of connection. And what we're finding in our research is that many of the uh, our people of African descent, Africans, who were here enslaved against their will, right, escaped to Puerto Rico and founded a free town called Cangrejos in Puerto Rico. So that we're connected in ways that generally in school you don't learn about because we're not in the school books or we're not in the history books. So what I'm challenging you with is to study about your family, study about your family's history, how your grandma and your grandpa moved in the world, right? In doing what they're doing, how your mom and your daddy have moved to bring you to where you are now, right? And then the next step is what are you going to do with that information to make sure that the world knows what we have achieved as a people? That the world knows that we are agents, right? We are determiners of how we act in the world. So the exhibition is looking at the African descendants that exist in Cuba, Puerto Rico, Santo Domingo, and in the diaspora because many of us had to uh, go to other places other than our root cultures and developed in New York, the United States, so that we're looking at the connections, the creative connections that bind us, right? People have labeled us Crucians, Puerto Rican, Dominicans, but there's another definition that we are linked historically because of the history of enslavement, that we were spread throughout the world, and now it's the time for us to come together. And the exhibition is celebrating us. So let me show you some of the pieces, and I'd like to get your reactions to what you're seeing, okay? Olga has put together this PowerPoint 
so that you can get a sense of it. Because our time is limited, what we're going to do is show you all the images. And what I want you to do is say what they, what they hold in common and what image to you. Does that make sense? What the image is holding common, right? And how you react to them. Because you know what? You're all artists. How many of you write? You write for your assignments? Everybody writes. You all write. How many of you read? OK. So that if you, write, you read for school, you're all artists. If you think, if you think about what you would like to be five years from now, 10 years from now, you're an artist. Because art is being creative. It's being th critical thinker, if you will. That you're thinking all the time. How many of you imagine things? How many of you imagine things? Just imagine, just imagine, create things in your head. Then you're an artist. So what you're seeing today is how people think, how people create. Some, the artists you're seeing today, it's on paper, it's sculpture, it's um, uh, canvas. But you can create in your mind, you can create on paper, you can create by dancing, you can create with music. So that all of that is creation and all of that is thinking, right? So we celebrate thinking and we celebrate creativity. Olga, can we go through them? Yes. What we did with the exhibition is invite artists from different parts of uh, our Caribbean basin, right? So these are artists from Cuba. This is an artist from uh, the work of Chopo. They're both from Cuba, yeah. <laughs> so do you so, want to ask? So that what I'm asking you to look at is what, together, when you look at the, art, the, music, uh, the images together, what do they make you think of, right? These artists are from the diaspora, mm -hmm. from New York, because you know that in New York, many people have left the islands and gone to New York, so you have Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, Cubans, St. Crucians, Haitians, Jamaicans, so that these artists reflect the diaspora. People who are growing up in cement, right? Here you have another group of artists, and you have the, the child artists. What? And here you have artists from Miami, as well as the diaspora the, in New York. New York. And Cuba and Cuba. So let's stop there for a minute. Oh. What do you see in common in the art? Is Which there one? a connection? Yes. Do you see a connection? Or do you see something that's familiar? <laughs> Share with us. <laughs> Great. <laughs> uh huh. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think that means? Well, just figure it out. Just figure it out. Use your imagination because whatever you're going to say is true, right? Because the artist is not here. So you can make it up. <laughs> that 
that's that's amazing. Those two points are amazing. One, that the artist captures what most of us have seen every day at home, right? Either people in rollers or in, in, in some kind of um, attention to hair, right? And sees it as a very important part of our culture, which is very important, right? Because what you see every day, what you do every day, if you fix your room in certain ways, if you decorate your room with certain colors, if you dress in certain colors because you like those colors and not other colors, you're curating. You're determining what you want to look like. And in fancy terms, you're determining your aesthetic. Aesthetic is how you see the world artistically. So that's very important. This artist focuses on New York mostly in the 70s and 80s. And uh, what our people have done in areas like New York, Miami, and so on, when they leave the Caribbean and go into other areas, they create the memory, right? And memory is key because these spaces are not conducive, do not have necessarily palm trees like New York City. I was brought up in East Harlem and there were no palm trees. But many of the people that go, go to New York, the artists are painting palms, are painting imagery that, that, that reminds them of home, right? And the concept of home becomes very important. The memory of home is what is passed on to the next generation. And these are, there's festivals in the streets where this couple is dancing. There's celebrations of Puerto Rico, Jamaica, Afro pop. You have any kind of festival that you have in the Caribbean is generally uh, replicated in the diaspora. So as we look at this um, upcoming Latin month or Latino month or however you want to term it, the reality is that you're looking at history and you're looking at memory and we're also looking at how do we connect our experiences. So we call this exhibition Absolutamente Negro, Absolutely Black. So why do you think we titled it Absolutely Black? If you were putting together this show and put together this title, what do you think it means? Absolutely black, absolutamente black, or absolutamente negro. Mm -hmm. Take it a little further. I see you smiling. Say that a little bit more. Yes, that's how we were thinking. Absolutely. We were thinking what connects us, right? And we didn't want the connection to be the countries that colonized us. We wanted it to be the traditions, the cultural traditions, the cultural memory that our parents bring to the table and celebrate those, right? I was growing up in East Harlem and my dad was born in Loisa, which is a black area, an Afro area in Puerto Rico. And he would be making uh, cups out of coconut. And since I didn't know any better, right, I would like, no, I want a glass cup, 
I don't want a coconut cup. And my dad says, well, unless you drink from the coconut cup, which is how I grew up, you're not getting a glass cup. Because I want you to know where you come from. Right? So that was teaching me about Puerto Rico before I ever got Hola, to Puerto Rico. That's memory. That's the importance of memory. That's the importance no, of valuing cultural tradition. So that I hope that when your parents are sharing with you what their experiences okay, are, <laughs> you <laughs> embrace them. You celebrate them. Right? Are there any other reactions no, to the show or increíble. what you're seeing? Because we Super hope that increíble. you go actually to see the exhibition. <laughs> vale, gracias, Wilfred. Bye. Any other thoughts? Sure, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, uh, we can use this one. Yeah. What do you mean by culture in general? Well, that's very important what you're saying, because culture in general makes it like um, homogenizes it, blurs it. But every culture has its story, right? Every culture has its history, and that's what's important. What is the story, right? And so your parents are from St. Croix? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the question is, do you know the story that they bring, the cultural story that they bring? Have they shared it with you? Up, up, bring it up, bring it up. How many of you have cell phones? How many of you hit record when you speak to your grandma or your uh, titi or your, how many of you are recording the elders in your family? With, huh? So what's the situation that you want to know about and record? Uh -huh. Who else records? You're smiling. Uh -huh. So those are creating memories, right? That's creating your story. So your cell phone is that way of you being able to record your experience, your family story, right? And at some point, even write it. At some point, film it. At some point, document it because that says that you're thinking like an artist. When you're working like that, when you're thinking like that, you're an artist. 
you're seeing art and you're seeing the beauty of your family. You're seeing the beauty of your stories. You're seeing the beauty of the dances. So I hope you all commit to recording your family because every family is a different story. You know, one day I decided I love my family and they were disappearing, right? They were becoming spirit. And I started writing our story, the family story, and wrote a book, and it got published. Your family story is very special. Nobody else is, can duplicate that story. So make sure you duplicate and write down the story that is yours. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? I just want to just you, you uh, still have some uh, time. Let you guys know since I'm documenting this, I'm going to talk bad about it. We do have something that's like candy and heritage. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, we, uh, CNC Arts, did partner mm -hmm. um, last year with Chant, which is an organization out in Fredericksted, um, to do the oral presentation, um, oral presentations of their um, family, pres um, preservation of the family through videoing. So um, we would love for the high schoolers, we did reach out to high school beforehand, um, and we are definitely going to reconnect with you guys to see if you'd like to be part of that journey where you interview your elders um, and we help you come up with some of those questions to dig deep into your family history um, so we, that we can um, video and record. Um, because just like Dr. Vega was saying, that unfortunately once your family members have left us, um, you don't have a way of going back. And I know that's one of my big regrets um, we didn't have the cell phones back in the day when my grandparents were um, alive. And so I, I wish I had their voices. I wish I'd captured their likeness. And once, it's, once they're gone, they're gone. So um, we will um, connect again and let you guys know a little bit more about that project as well, too. So you can continue with so that So I hope, I hope you all uh, commit. Can make a comment before we go? We have to still have um because i know we were we had we had short time but we right. still have 15 minutes so um my name is olga <laughs> hello everybody i wanted to point out that we are going to be at cmca arts and if you guys have had the opportunity to visit a museum sometimes in the museums around the world the museums in, within the caribbean this, the faces that we're showing here, that are faces that look like all of us, they're not shown in the museum. Usually what we see is other art, mostly European-based art, right? So one thing that's important about this show, and that's why it's called also, it's another of the many reasons why we call it uh, Absolutamente Negro, it's because, as someone said, we, have, we are all of African descent, but usually in some parts of the world, that's not as acknowledged as we would want to. And sometimes in, in parts of the Caribbean specifically, and we have to say that, specifically in some of the Spanish speaking spaces in the Caribbean, it's not seen as an absolutamente negro or absolutely black space. It's more seen as an absolutely mixed people of different shades of whiteness or you know brownness or whatever we want to call it. So it's also important to, to bring the point that doing these kinds of uh, exhibitions, we are also lifting not only our voices, but our aesthetics, our faces are there in, in museums' walls as well. To make sure that that story is told, as Marta was saying, to make sure that when people remember all the exhibits in the world that are lifting culture or voices, they remember our faces also. So that's, that's also important to, make, to point out. So I hope you promise, because I'm coming back and I'm visiting again, right, um, that you record a member of your family, right? And so when we come back, we'll talk about your story. Because the artists are telling what they see, and I want to know what you see, right? And you started breaking it down. Right, so that if you can record your family or write it, however you choose to do it, paint it, write a song, create a dance, it's important that you know your story. Okay, thank you.
I just had a couple of things I wanted to highlight. I think, can you tell? Can you tell? Can you, can you see? Can you see? Can you see? <laughs> the idea, and it's funny, this just kind of happened like this, but I pretty much so was influenced by seeing some of these art pieces. And I really would like for everybody to navigate very carefully about what this National Hispanic Month, I used to know it as Hispanic American Heritage Month, and it changes the name quite frequently because it's very peculiar that just like we say black history is 365, Hispanic heritage is 365. And it's really important. We can go on and we can even speak of Danish heritage, 365. Everybody's heritage is 365. It's when you make it living. So like art, for myself, I see art as life. Because everything that we're doing all the time can have, not can have, will have, does have, an artistic flavor. Some kind, it might be the color, it might be the splash, it actually might be the colorlessness. Sometimes it's music, and I don't even want you to try to tell me all the names of the artists that you listen to, because I probably can't pronounce some of them. But I think it's important, the music that you listen to, you would be surprised at those beats, that you'd be like, yeah, yeah, fly, roll, right? Are coming from samples, from music from my generation, right? And it's really funny to me, because I'm like, that sounds like Fela. Wait a second, that sounds like King Sonny Ade. Wait, that sounds like, wait a minute, is that Lord Kishner? And I'm like, and it's 2023, and persons are listening to this type of music. So I just wanted you to really envelope that experience. So if you have a moment between four and eight o'clock this Saturday, you would get an opportunity not only to see the art, embrace the art, and see it in its full manifestation, because some of these are life-size. It's a little different to see it in a PowerPoint than to see it really living. But it would give you an experience to come and, and know some of the artists, know some of the curators, ask those types of questions, and just be in a really wonderful space that brings art to life, brings art and education. You'll hear me talk about how do we heal the Virgin Islands, heritage education and arts legacy. See how that rolls? Did you get it? Heritage education and arts legacy. That's something that we really try to do. My daytime shift now is at, across the street at the University of the Virgin Islands. And I encourage persons, I'm not trying to do recruitment, I'm just saying it's important that you use some of the resources that are available there as well. So when you're navigating, you've got a variety of persons right before you. We do respond to email. I know most of us respond to text, and almost everybody has Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, something that you can nick can link to. How many persons use TikTok? There we go. I'm expecting to see pictures and stuff. Like while we may not take pictures of you, it's important that what you learn, what you experience in school, start to share that. Start to let persons know, you know what, I learned something about art. It was connected to Hispanic Heritage Month. As a matter of fact, the President of the United States every year does a proclamation. So make sure you look for that so that you can see what the themes are, what the President of the United States does, what he says about this particular month, and how it connects to you. You never know. You might get some extra resources. I mean, your classroom looks awesome. Awesome. How, and Absolutely I'm just like, awesome. awesome. Like, we got applause yeah, for that. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> this is, well, no, this, thank you so thank much. You We're very it. honored. Very honored. Yes. Thank you. I want to be a student in the class. It's so gorgeous. <laughs> Yes, okay. it's fabulous. So I'm just wanting to thank oh, you so thank you. much for having us. It was a pleasure. <laughs> oh my guys, we're so blessed. We're truly blessed. Um, I want to piggyback or, or reflect on one of the experiences Dr. Vega highlighted, which is um, drinking from the coconut cup. My cousin's husband made coffee cups from coconuts. And I remember getting my first um, coconut cup. And... I don't know where it is, but I don't. I, it has to be home. But my grandfather would always say that the best coffee tastes. I mean, coffee tastes better drinking from your coconut cup. So it brought so much memory and experiences, mm -hmm. and we are truly blessed, estudiantes, to be filled with diversity. And everything that we experience today, this memory that you attained, is so. Um, it comes together with our theme, which which part of our theme for Latin Hispanic Heritage Month is Todos Somos Uno, We're All One. And I hope that this experience awakened something in you 
and definitely we have a lot of work to do because we are going to build on those memories. We're going to create new memories. And I want you guys to go back in history and, and embrace who you are, where you come from. And I'm, I'm so grateful for this opportunity. I'm, this, what you're happening, what you're experiencing today was meant to be. I'm so grateful for you, Brown, Ms. Brown, for bringing these powerful women here. The, um, the information you could get from them is authentic. Not what you're going to get online. Yes, you'll see something, but this is valuable. This is like what you, I hope that you guys could do an interview. Take advantage of the resources because I feel sometimes that we are losing ourselves. I mean, technology is amazing, but we're losing ourselves. We're, lo we're losing our mm -hmm. culture. We're, I mean, we're losing our diversity. Um, and as, um, could you repeat your name, please, Dr. Dr. Chen said that being monolingual, what that was impactful, is a part of, you know, it's, it's making you kind of illiterate. And you guys are going to leave here bilingual conmigo. Muy bien. Y muchas gracias. No, gracias. Gracias. Thank you. Gracias a ustedes.